Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Go Get It Podcast, episode 14. Damn, we are getting pretty far into these episodes. Um, and today I got um, John Arpino with me. He's got a crazy weight loss story. Absolutely insane. Super inspiring guy. Super motivational. Um, make sure you guys go follow his Instagram. I'll have all that link. And um, why don't you just go ahead, introduce yourself, give yourself, give a little summary of your story in general, and uh, we'll, get, we'll dive into the specifics uh, right after you give your little summary. I appreciate that. What's going on, everybody? I appreciate you guys tuning in. For those that don't know, my name is John Arpino, otherwise known as JRP's Journey on Instagram. Uh, I have been kind of in the weight loss community for going on five years now. I think this is, I'm about to enter in my fifth year of uh, doing this journey. Um, for those that don't know me, uh, originally, I, my starting weight was 510 pounds. Um, I have lost over 272 pounds currently. Um, and I'm out here. I'm just doing the damn thing. You know, a uh, local guy, uh, grew up, you know, I grew up in Queens, moved out to Long Island. Um, you know, I'm just a regular, normal, everyday guy who, you know, unfortunately got up to 510 pounds, almost died in his house. I'm sure that we'll get to that later. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just paving my way, trying to inspire, trying to motivate, trying to help other people out there change their lives. And in turn, give myself my own inspiration and, you know, continue to change my life. So that's where, uh, that's where we're at. And I appreciate you having me on today. I think that we're going to have a really, really cool discussion. I think so too. And one of the things that you said already uh, kind of intrigues me because you said, you know, I'm just a normal guy who got up to that weight because that mm -hmm. can happen to any person. And oh, then yeah. people are like, oh, like, how'd you shed all that? Well, you got to realize like, you're, we're still human beings. Like we are still right. people that just do everyday things but we just chose to take a path where we just wanted to better our health and wellness. That's right. So like, can you kind of explain like how you can still be a normal human being, but like, you know, but you can start this fitness journey at whatever point. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, well, rephrase, rephrase the question. What do you mean? Like be a normal human being and, and start your weight loss journey. Like so people, you're saying, because, <clears throat> go ahead, because go people think you have to be a super motivated individual. People think you have to just be this other person to right, even right, like right. try to start your weight loss journey or right. whatever fitness goal you're reaching towards. But like really anyone can do it is what I was trying to say. Oh, I, oh yeah. No, a thousand percent. Sorry, I should have worded that. Differently. No, 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 no. You're all good, brother. Mm -hmm. Listen, it, it, it really is. It's it, you're not born. And, and I actually just talked about this today on my, uh, on my Instagram. No one is born successful. Okay. Um, there's people out there. God bless them. They're born with money. Uh, when they're born with money, that is exactly what happened. They were born with money. They didn't build that money. They didn't build that success. They were blessed enough to be born into that. Um, but when it comes to actual genuine success, no one, no one pops out the womb and they're like, yo, I'm successful. It just, it doesn't work like that. So, I mean, listen, there's people out there. I don't care who it is. It could be the, the most admirable celebrity that you have. It could be somebody on the street. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a struggle. Um, and it just, it, it comes down to realizing that you need to change your life, accepting your failures, because listen, and we're going to talk more about this later. Everyone fails. And you need to be okay with failing, okay? Everyone fails. So you have to walk into any situation knowing, hey, listen, I don't know how to do this yet, but uh, when I fail, I'm going to figure out why I failed. I'm going to look at the big picture and I'm going to pinpoint where my failure was and I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that because that's the only way you're going to get success. Without failure, there is no success every single time. So if you're listening to this, you're in kind of like the same spot that I was, 500 pounds, maybe you're 400 pounds, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just know <clears throat> you don't have to be this super athlete, you don't need, you don't need to be athletic at all. I was not athletic at all. You don't need to be anything. All is what you need is to have that drive to want to change your life. That's all it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And I think a huge thing is that like people look at failure as like, Oh, like I'm never going to do that again. Like that right. was embarrassing. Right. You have to look at failure as a learning opportunity every single time. Yes. Cause otherwise like how else are you going to grow as a person? You know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. Exactly. Listen, you know, if you fail a thousand times, make sure you get up a thousand and one. You know what I'm saying? For every time you fail, just make sure you get up again. And that's it. It's just that accountability. It's that drive. It's, it's knowing failure is not the end game. That's it. And when you accept that, when you accept that failure is, is a natural process of, of life, a, a natural process of healing, that's when you'll break through. You'll get to that other portion of your brain that is telling you, hey, listen, we could do this. 
Like nothing can stand in our way. Are we going to slip up? Are we going to trip? Absolutely, man. I'm sorry. I don't even know if I can curse on this podcast. You're good. You're good. But, I curse all the time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I appreciate it. But yeah, you just have to know that like failure is going to happen. You know, it, 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 like you don't start off at somebody like myself who was 510 pounds and walk into the gym for the very first time and not fail. It just, it, it doesn't happen. And if you are somebody out there who started off where I was and you haven't failed once, I'd love to meet you. And I'd love to shake your hand and ask you how you do it. Because man, I couldn't even bend over to tie my shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, so something's got to give. You have to, you have to learn to accept the failures in life. Absolutely. And something you said earlier, some people are born with wealth and that's right. super true. Like some people don't really have to work too much to get to where they want to be because right. sometimes they're already born there. Right. And you could even use that. Cause I was talking with uh, Matty Fusaro on this. Um, when I did my podcast with him, we were like, yeah. And some people are also born with great genetics. Some people are just born with six packs. Some right. people are born athletic. Some people are born with these natural abilities to just look good. And everyone kind of admires them because that's just how they are. This is how right. they were. They came out of the womb. And like, it's, it kind of, it's kind of unfair. To, some people might think it's unfair, but like in all actuality, like you should just be working towards goals for yourself. You shouldn't be worrying about what those other people are, were at. They should be focusing on improving yourself as a person, physically, mentally, uh, wealth wise, like everything. Like, what Oh, hell yeah. Uh, if you're, if you're walking into this, uh, for the very first time, and you're sitting there and maybe you're, you're scrolling on Instagram. Maybe you find all your inspiration from Instagram and you're going through this process of changing your life. If you find that person who motivates you on Instagram, but you keep comparing your journey, your life, your struggles to them, you're not going to make improvement. Your story, your life, your struggles are your own. So you have to learn, you know, the ins and outs of you. You know, it's not, don't worry about the other guy. That's what I tell people all the time. Forget the other guy. If they're motivating you, that's awesome. You know, keep up with that motivation. Have that motivation in your life. But the moment that you start to say, hey, Bob is doing way better than I am and I'm doing the same exact thing as Bob, that's where you're going to fuck up. That, that is where, you know, when you start comparing yourself to others, just worry about you. Mm -hmm. For the first time in your life, just worry about what you need to do and how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I remember, that kind of reminds me of high school when, I like first wanted to start getting a little bit leaner. I wasn't like overweight or anything, but um, and right. we'll get to your, we'll get to your story very, very soon. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like tracking my calories and I'm like, dude, no one is fucking doing this shit. Like, right. why am I doing this? Like, why, like, why am I going to put myself through this? And then I realized, well, not everyone looks the way I want to look at some point. So I'm going to need to take this extra step in order to actually see the results that I want because no right. one else is doing this. Like no one's doing this for me. Like I'm doing this for myself and I need to get on this. Otherwise I'm never going to see that end goal. Exactly. And, and also, you know, no one's doing it for you mentally or physically. You know what I'm saying? Like no one's going to sit there and, and, and weigh out your food for you. If you want to track your macros and, and, you know, you have a certain goal you want to hit. Maybe you're trying to have those six pack abs, you're, you know, whatever the case may be, nobody's going to do that work for you. You have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can't compare yourselves to people that aren't doing the same goal. You really exactly. you like, you can't even remotely, you're like, oh, like, you know, well, he's not even doing it. I shouldn't even worry about it. Well, yeah. come on, man. You got different goals. You, you got, you exactly. got to focus on your own shit. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Exactly. That, that, that's like uh, comparing like a CrossFit person to, to a power lifter, mm -hmm. you know, like different it's goals. different goals, totally different goals, D different eating habits, you know, d different everything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So let's dive into your story. So sure. you said um, at your heaviest, what were you? So about around my heaviest, I was probably somewhere, you know, around 500 to 510 pounds. Uh, I avoided the scale at all costs my whole entire life. Um, the only time I would ever hop on a scale was when I was admitted into the hospitals for asthma attacks and stuff like that. I have been asthmatic since birth. Um, I had very, very severe asthma as a child, uh, well into my young adulthood before I started my journey. I would be in the hospital for my asthma, pretty much clockwork, man. Like the same time of year, every year, multiple times a year for multiple weeks at a time. Uh, I was on a name to name basis with, you know, the, the floor nurses and the, the custodians and everything like that. You know, um, that was my life. Um, so yeah, I was 510 pounds and uh, yeah, that, that was me. So what age did you realize that you kind of started developing this habit of eating a little bit more than most people or at the time? Like what age did this like problem of yours start developing? Um, it wasn't. It, it, all right. So my eating habits were never a secret. Um, okay. So the reason I, I had such a um, 
such a food addiction and why I was such an overweight kid, again, goes back to my asthma problems. So for those that don't know, um, a lot of people when they have very severe asthma like I do, they get put on a steroid, uh, a steroid called prednisone. So what prednisone does is it either stunts your growth or it makes you gain weight. Now, for those that don't know me, I'm six foot five. You know, it never stunted my growth. It made me blow up. Uh, it gave me moon face. It gave me mood swings. It made me starving every day for my whole entire life. Now, this is a drug that you're only supposed to be on for two weeks at a time. I was on it for 13 years straight. No breaks, no nothing. And if I got sick, you know, the milligrams would just go up. So it, I never had a break. You know, my whole body chemistry because of, you know, this drug was so fucked up. I just had, I had so many problems. Um, you know, I was just, I was a miserable wreck to be around and I couldn't control it. it you know, my asthma, my, my ailments, the, the drugs, they all controlled me. So it wasn't a secret, you know, that I was overeating or I was eating too much or, you know, I liked food. Um, you know, for a while, did my family give in to me? Absolutely, man. Like I was a sick kid. Uh, I had doctors telling my parents, you know, he's not going to make it till his 13th birthday. And then my 13th birthday rolled around. And then they were like, you know, he's not going to make it to 15, 15 rolled around. I'm still here. Then, you know, he's not going to make it to 18, 18 rolled around. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Cause I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? So like something's got to give, I can't be on these drugs for as long that I'm, you know, as long as I'm on these drugs. Um, so that's kind of like where the food addiction came. Um, just being so addicted to these foods that ha I mean, excuse me, being addicted, being on these drugs that had these terrible side effects made me addicted to food. I didn't want to be addicted to food. Yes. I come from a very old school Italian family. I'm from New York. All is what we do is eat, you know, you know, someone dies, you eat, there's a birthday, you eat, you're sad, you eat, you're bored, you eat. But in the long run, nobody was sitting there and ignoring the fact that I was fat. It was just, that was the way of life. I didn't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. And what age were you at your heaviest? I was 22 at my heaviest. You're that's that's yeah. Heaviest. That's what that's when my journey really began was when I when I was 22. Okay, so why don't you kind of go ahead and explain to me how at that or kind of even going up to that age, how were you feeling mentally because you were on these drugs and it was just making you eat and you literally couldn't even control it. So like, what emotions were going through your head throughout this time of you just like not even literally not even being able to control what you can eat essentially? Man, I was I was miserable. Uh, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with the people. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was miserable. You would never know I was miserable. I would never allow anyone to, um, to foresee that I was mad. I was angry. I was upset. I was depressed. I hated life. No one knew that I would wake up every day. I go to school. I have a big smile on my face. I was the funny fat guy. You know, I was the guy in charge of you being entertained while you were in school. That was my job. Um, I knew I was fat. You knew I was fat. Everyone in the school knew I was fat. So like, if you know I'm fat and I know, like, if you know that I'm fat and I know that I'm fat, you have nothing on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm already beating you to your punchlines of your jokes. You can't make fun of me. I'm taking the ammunition out of your gun. Now you have nothing. So now you can sit there and you can, you know, laugh at the jokes that I'm telling, or you could keep it moving. That's mm -hmm. just, that's just what it is. So that's, that's basically how I lived my life for uh, 22 years, um, was just being this very, not jolly. I will never use the word jolly. I wasn't Santa Claus, but you know, I was just, <laughs> yeah. I was a fun guy to be around. Um, could I not do a lot of the things that my friends were doing? Absolutely. I couldn't play sports. I couldn't participate in gym class. Um, I couldn't fit on a roller coaster anymore. Uh, I could hardly fit in the front seat of my buddy's car, but I was still out. I was doing stuff. I was going to parties. I was drinking with my friends. You know, I was, I was living that every day, you know, young adult, teenage, you know, life. I didn't want my weight to be responsible for me not having experiences. So like I had to put myself out there. Um, I always wanted to be around people. I was a people person, still a people person. Um, you know, when I was a little kid, my doctors used to call me the mayor because I used to walk around and like talk to everybody and want to know, you know, what everybody was doing and how is everybody. That's just me. That's just my personality. But, you know, when you shut the door and you shut the light and you go to bed at night, that's when the demons come out to play. That's when you're your most depressed. That's when you're not putting on a production for anybody because you're sitting there and you're just sitting there with your thoughts. So that's when I was the most miserable, when I couldn't be around anybody and I couldn't like kind of highlight my, my funny, you know, sarcastic side and I had to be just left there with me and just me. I couldn't stand me. You know, I was my own worst enemy. I looked in the mirror and I, you know, I would say disgusting, terrible things to myself about myself. I just hated 
me. Like I hated John Arpino and that was such a fucking bad way to live. Like you shouldn't do that. And I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it later, but like when you think negative, negative things happen. You know, it's the power of positive thinking. Once you start talking to yourself in a positive outlook, bro, your whole life will begin to change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I was just, yeah, actually I was talking about that with someone the other day. The more you surround yourself with negativity, the more you, you have pessimistic people around you, like you're, you, you heard, of course you've heard the saying, you're the, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Right. So if you hang out with five negative people, you're going to be the sixth negative person. Exactly. If you just start instilling little things and habits of positivity into your life, like, uh, like I'll take, for example, like I've been reading more, I've been listening to more podcasts like this, just having positivity, like in my head, um, as much as I possibly can. So, right. um, what are some things that you do now? Um, that kind of instill that positivity and so that people can prevent from having these demons come to them because everyone has demons that come in their head. So what are some good ways that you can uh, potentially avoid having that problem ever occur? Um, Remind yourself how important you are. Uh, Honestly, I know that that sounds really, really funny, but um, really you need to sit down with yourself, have a conversation and realize what you like about yourself. Um, what a really good friend of mine does, if you know, there's people out there on the, in the weight loss Instagram community, if you guys know who Gourmet Goes Keto is, uh, he makes a gratitude list uh, every morning. You know, he'll, he'll name top five things that he's grateful for. And when you start recognizing how many blessings that you have in your life, it could be something as small as, you know, I woke up this morning and I was able to turn on my light because I paid my electricity bill. You know, you realize, you know, it's all not that bad. You know, there's people out there that have it way worse. And just because you're, you know, 150 pounds overweight, it's not the end of the world because it's not a dead end. You just got to figure out how to create a new reality. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for people to think like that sometimes, I feel like, because we never think about um, people that have it worse than us. We just think about ourselves. We're like, oh, like, you know, I'm so miserable. Like, this is an awful day. Like, you know, maybe you might have missed a payment. Uh, maybe you got to a meeting later, something like that. You're like, damn, my life's over, blah, blah, blah. But there are people with such worse circumstances and no one really thinks about that ever. No one does. No one does. And when you start looking at the bigger picture of life, dude, and you really start putting all the small things in perspective, those small things, just like when it comes to weight loss, small changes make for big results, small things in your life. When you start piecing them together, you'll realize how much they really make up that big picture of how important things are. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, if you don't mind me asking like, what are five things that you're grateful for right now? And then I'll name um, five things that I'm grateful for. Yeah, cool. Uh, what I'm grateful for, well, one, I am so grateful that, you know, we could go back to the gyms in New York. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll, be, I'll be back at my home gym on uh, Tuesday. So shout out to ProFit and Deer Park. Those are my mm-hmm. people. Um, I am grateful that I have running water in my house. I have clean running water. I am able to drink my gallon of water a day and not really, if I, if I really wanted to, I wouldn't have to pay for the gallon. Like I could just kind of like, you know, Mm-hmm. on the faucet and you know fill up a gallon mm-hmm. um i am grateful that um honestly it's it's gonna sound dumb but i'm grateful that i am able to now bend over and tie my own shoes i am grateful that i can fit in my own shower now i am grateful that i can uh you know wipe my own ass like i know that that you know it's gonna be shocking to some people to hear but you know 510 pounds it's it was hard to fucking turn around and wipe your own ass i mean it is what it is so those are those are some things that you know i just remind myself every single day like yo it's different now like you have so much to be grateful for you weren't in this spot three four years ago five years ago so and i would love to hear you know five grateful things i mean five things that you're grateful for well i am 100 percent grateful for my family especially as of lately they have been just super supportive of everything that i've been doing super grateful for that i'm super grateful that i woke up this morning Hell yeah! because some people really just sometimes sadly it's been happening a lot i've known a lot of people that have passed away recently yeah. um even like recently with chad mcwoseman like that is super sad so yeah dude. i'm grateful that i'm alive today and mm-hmm. grateful that i could do everything i could today I'm grateful for the recent power of social media because we're able to bring the message out of positivity, um, motivate people to get to the gym, make them feel better about their lives in general. Um, I'm also grateful for the gyms uh, working out in general because that has changed my perspective on life and changed everything there is. And um, I guess I'm also grateful for, um, I'm going to say like the food. I food I'm very grateful for because I know a lot of, I know, I know people in America are going to be like, oh, you know, like food, like, what are you grateful for that? Like everyone has food. Well, some people, they don't really just don't eat 
don't eat as well as you think. Like yeah, some dude. people have nothing. So I'm there's grateful. a lot of Americans that wake up every morning and they don't have food in their house. Even, you know? yeah, even so, even so. Yeah. yeah. So I just like, I always keep, it, it's hard to keep that in the back of your mind sometimes because sometimes just life, like in life and frustration just takes over. But like, sometimes you got to think about the little things that actually yeah, that not everyone has. So um, I just think it's awesome that um, I have all those five things. So I'm super grateful for that. Oh, and I'm also very grateful that we're having this conversation today. Seriously. Exactly. And, and I'm yes. also grateful for that we're having this conversation as well. It's awesome. It's awesome. So why don't we dive into, so what was your diet like at your highest weight? If you could describe it, if you could describe um, it. Have you ever spent $32 at Taco Bell on yourself? Surprisingly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So imagine that uh, and imagine that probably like two or three times a day. Um, you know, it, I would order food from, let's say, uh, pizzeria. I would get um, a whole pie to myself, probably half a dozen garlic knots and probably an order of wings. Um, uh, when I would go to work in the morning, I would order two bacon, egg and cheeses uh, on a bagel um, with not just, not just bacon, egg and cheese. I would order like a sausage, bacon, egg, cheese, cheddar cheese, extra cheese, two Welch's grape juices, uh, and an iced tea. That was every single morning. So right there, I mean, I don't even, I've never even broke down the calories of what my original breakfasts were, but mm -hmm. it's probably disgusting. Um, you know, then comes around lunch. Lunch, I'm probably, you know, if I'm, you know, a young adult now, I'm, you know, I'm going to work, I'm out of school. <clears throat> uh, I'm probably getting a whole sandwich to myself, like a huge hero, a huge bag of chips. Not a little, not a little guy, not a 99 cent guy. No, 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 no. I need like the 399 bag, the fat bag of chips. Yeah. I need that guy. Uh, probably two Arizonas and yeah. And then I go home for dinner and it's whatever my family is making. And again, I come from a very old school Italian family. So, you know, it's either pizza, pasta, um, some sort of meat, uh, a lot of carbs, a lot of potato, a lot of grains. So it's just a culmination every day. And this is my life every single day. Disgusting. A lot of food. Not that, you know, this food isn't great. I, I love food. I'm still a foodie, but the amount of food that I was eating in a, in a, in a short span of a day, remember you only got 24 hours in a day, bro. And I was spending probably like 15 of those hours eating, you know, like I was spending a good amount of time eating. And then that's just, that's just meals. That's not even saying, yo, I walk into the kitchen because I got to go talk to my father. And then you open the snack drawer and you take a hostess cake and you eat a hostess cake or you go in the refrigerator and there's, you know, chocolate pudding in the refrigerator. Okay. I'm going to have some chocolate pudding now. You know, I, again, I was just eating to eat. I was just eating because there was nothing else to do. Okay. There's a commercial on TV. All right, bet. I'm going to go walk to the kitchen and see what, you know, if the refrigerator's changed in the last 10 minutes. And you know, that was, that was my life, man. Like I would prepare for life events with food. You know, I'm an avid wrestling fan. I'm a professional wrestler now in real life. Like that is a passion of mine. I promised myself as a kid that if I ever lost the weight, I'd go and become a professional wrestler. The last three years, that is what I've done. I've been in wrestling school. It's my life. But as a kid, wrestling pay-per-view was on bro i was hitting the store before the wrestling pay-per-view came on getting you know three four bags of chips you know a, a two liter of soda and i was i was in the game i was ready so that that was my eating habits were disgusting and you know i think why that was such a powerful question to ask you is because a lot of people are going to be like oh crap I, I do that right now like yeah. i prepare i prepare for all these events with right. food yeah like if my friend's coming over let's go get food if yeah. I, i'm about to sit down and watch tv oh let me get a bag of chips yeah. Um, if I'm going to go out, oh, I need, I need to eat before I go out. So mm -hmm. it's just like the power of even just like recognizing like and learning about how many calories are in food, macronutrients, all this stuff is just super important. Mm -hmm. And uh, once people like, once people realize that they're going to be like, wow, like I really don't eat as healthy as I thought because some people were like, oh, you know, I eat decently healthy. And then right. they actually break down. Maybe they'll track for like a week and they'll be like, holy crap. Like what am I yeah. doing with my diet? Yeah, man. So, what would, what would be one step that, or what would be like one thing someone could do to maybe recognize that their, their eating habits aren't so healthy? Start a food log. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people don't like to do that and I'm, I'm going to attest to it. I hate doing food logs, but you know, especially if you're just starting out or you're just in the middle and you're, you're hitting this plateau now, or you, you don't know how you're going to lose the next, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 pounds, start writing out what you're eating. Um, you're going to recognize somewhere, Hey, I'm fucking up and I'm fucking up right here around two o'clock and I'm fucking up here around four 30 and you're just going to be able to go back and fix that. It, it, you know, when you're able to physically, you know, and uh, tangibly touch what you're doing, you know, and this goes for your goals too. Um, when you're, when you're physically able to touch it, you can change it. So 
like you'll eat, right? So eat, like eat during the day, eat during the day. At the end of the night, write down what you ate, write down when you ate it, what you ate, how much of it you ate. Then read it back to yourself. If you feel that like something's wrong, try to fix it. Um, and it's simple stuff like that. It's shopping different. You know what I mean? You have to be careful with a lot of these brands out there. There's a lot of these brands will say like, will put stupid labels and you know, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but like they'll say, Oh, something has protein in it and it's good for you. Well, just cause it has protein in it does not actually mean it's good for you. All right. Or if it says no sugar added, a lot of people think that no sugar added means sugar free and that's not true at all. So, you know, you have to be mindful of, you know, what you're putting in your body and also what you're purchasing at the store. Like if you, if you, if you're, if you're the one true shopping for yourself, look at these food labels, look at, look at what you're buying. Is it beneficial to you? If not, put it back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when people go to the grocery store, I always tell them like, uh, especially with my clients, I, at least I tell them, you know, if you absolutely like want something processed, just go in there knowing exactly what you're going to get processed. But other than that one thing, maybe it's like a cereal or something like that. Right. Stay out of the inner aisles because yes. that's where all the processed stuff is. Absolutely. If you stay on the outside, you'll go, you'll go with the lean meats. You'll get the uh -huh. vegetables, the dairy, whatever yep. you need. You don't need yep. to go in those middle aisles unless like there's something that you absolutely crave that you need to have in your daily routine to make it a sustainable diet for yourself. Right. Other right. than that, you should not be in there buying a bunch of garbage. Nope. Like we talked about like the chips. Mm -hmm. um, even I'm not a huge fan of frozen foods. Um, I would even say oh, yeah. like, away from those. So like, um, yeah, like what, what are your thoughts on like going to the grocery store and just like in general? I mean, listen, grocery store does not have to be a scary place. Like you just said, stay away from those inner aisles. There's nothing but garbage in there. Um, if there is stuff that, you know, you kind of feel like you need to balance out your diet. I mean, just go for that one thing. Um, and again, be mindful of food labels, learn how to read a nutrition fact. I didn't know how to read a nutrition fact for a very, very long time. I didn't know what I was looking for. Um, now that I know how to do it, it's changed my whole outlook on life. Um, and as far as like, if you're asking me what you should be buying in a grocery store, again, like you just stated, a lot of clean foods. Stay away from the processed junk. Um, if it's grown out of the ground and it's exactly how it was grown out of the ground, put that in your cart. If it's, you know, lean protein and it's exactly that, put it in your cart. Other than that, man, I don't want to see you walking down the cereal aisle. I don't want to see you walking down the chip mm -hmm. aisle. There's food hacks. You know what I'm saying? Like I personally, I love to eat at night. That's just my jam, dude. Like when I was heavy, I'd love to sit, you know, in bed, watch TV before I go to bed and snack. It's okay. Um, and the way that I kind of adjusted that to my life now is okay. Instead of a bag of Funyuns, I'll have a bag of Quest chips, you know, and you're, you're, you're talking about, Funyuns are probably what an extra 150 calories per, you know, whatever it is. It's simple little changes. And it, and all right. So maybe the calories are different, right? But also the ingredients are, are very different. You want to look for stuff that has very minimal line of ingredients. Like you, you shouldn't be buying juice and the juice has 35, like 35 different ingredients in it. It should literally just be the name of the fruit, water, and, you know, maybe a little bit of sugar, but whatever. It shouldn't have all these fucking nasty fucking chemicals. And, you know, you just have to switch up what you're doing. There's, there's hacks to everything, I promise you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I, I know, especially like when people come to me first for like meal plans and yeah. I write it up or whatever, super simple stuff. Um, literally just, I keep it whole foods, a vegetable, maybe a fruit per meal. And like, that's literally all you need. And they're like, wow, I feel so much fuller. Like yeah. I don't feel as hungry. And I'm like, it's because you've never had whole foods before. Right. So as soon as you start adding whole foods, you'll realize that all the pizza, all the chips, that was just making you hungrier. Hungrier. That yeah. just wanted you to have more of that so you could buy more. Yeah, dude. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah and, it's that but, excess yeah. sugar. Exactly. That's all it is, man. Well, a yeah. lot of people don't realize that your body um, breaks down and registers sugar the same as it does as cocaine. Um, so when people say they're addicted to food, they are really addicted to food. Like your body cannot tell the difference between sugar and cocaine. Cocaine is a controlled substance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it's absolutely mind boggling to me, mm -hmm. but there's so much shit with excess sugar that we as a society just push down younger generations throats. Exactly. Exactly. And when like someone goes from like eating, I don't know, like some, like, let's say, let's say like, let's take for instance, like Taco Bell, like they had that every night. And right. now I'm like, all right, Stop going to Taco Bell. How about you make your own burrito at home, get some lean steak, 
mm -hmm. some low fat cheese, mm -hmm. get a whole wheat tortilla. Tell me you're going to feel so much fuller. You're going to feel way better afterwards. Maybe throw some vegetables in there. Right. Maybe even throw some sriracha on there. You're yeah. going to feel way better after eating that as opposed yeah. to Taco Bell. Cause you and me both know after Taco Bell, not always the best story. You know what I'm no. talking about? Yeah, exactly. I feel you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely not the best case. No, of um, course. So can you tell me exactly at your heaviest, that was 500, what, how many pounds? Five, like 510. 510? 510. Five, yeah. So what was the trigger? What was like, what was like where you were like, fuck this. This is not who I want to be. I want to live a long, healthy life. I want to be a healthier person. I want to feel better about myself. When was that turning point? <laughs> Um, are you a baseball fan? I actually am a baseball fan. Yeah. Okay. Are you a Mets fan or a Yankees fan? Mets. Are you really? Yes. Yes. Okay. I am. I'm, a, I'm a Mets rare. fan as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm a Mets fan as well. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to follow this story very well that I'm about to tell to you. Mm -hmm. Do you remember in 2015, our amazing world series run? Yes. Yes. Okay. I do. Do you remember the fuck chase Utley game? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's the night of the fuck chase Utley game. Were you I there? Am, no, no, no. Oh, okay. So I'm in my house. Uh, it's the night of the fuck Chase Utley game. Uh, I'm getting ready to watch the uh, baseball game with my father. Um, at the time, I, again, I'm 510 pounds. Um, I am sick with a cold. Now, again, I had very, very severe asthma. Um, and my asthma would get very bad if I, you know, got sick, if I got a cold, if I got the flu, it would flare up my asthma very bad that I'd end up in the hospital. So, um, I'm sick with a, uh, just a cold and, you know, I'm, I'm in my room, I'm hanging out, I'm ready to get to go watch the game. And my, my stepmom comes in the room and she's like, Hey, why don't you put some Vicks vapor rub on your chest? Again, I'm an old school Italian family, Vicks vapor rub, just like in Spanish house cures everything. Yep. I don't yep. give a shit. Absolutely. Everything, you know, 100%, I agree with that. <laughs> so, so she comes in, she slabs up the fucking, the Vicks vapor rub on my chest. And then all of a sudden. Because I don't know why Vicks Vaporub has never bothered me a day in my life. It made my lungs lock up, totally lock up. So now I'm having a massive asthma attack in my house. My dad passes by my room, and the only thing that I was able to get out to him was call an ambulance. So lo, so lo and behold, um, I actually ended up code blueing in my house. Uh, I almost died in front of my whole entire family in my living room. Now, unfortunately, this is not the first time that I've almost died in front of my whole family, but um, this is the most tragic, the most real, the most I knew I was fucked moment in my life. Um, so I'm sitting there in my living room now gasping for air. EMT show up to my house. They roll a gurney in the house. Now, nobody on the scene, unfortunately, was ALS certified. So for those at, at home that don't know what ALS certification is, basically nobody was allowed legally to administer an EpiPen to me. If you don't know what an EpiPen is, that's epinephrine. It's pure adrenaline, usually given to you if you're going into anaphylactic shock. Um, so no one on the scene was allowed to give me that. Now, my lungs are locking up. I am code bluing in my house. My eyes are bulging out of my head. I'm in a cold sweat. Um, they finally put my huge body onto this little gurney. And as they're rolling me out of the house, this EMT looks me dead in the eye and he goes, I'm so sorry. And it was at that moment where I was able to tell myself, hey, you fucked up you might not make it the five minutes down the road to the hospital. So now I'm in the back of an ambulance and all what I really remember from this ambulance trip was kind of staring up at the, the ceiling of the ambulance and there being a clock, you know, above the door and I'm staring at this clock and a few months prior, um, this was October. So February of that year, I lost my grandma. My grandma was my best friend in the whole wide world. She raised me from when I was a kid. She was my mom. That whole time I'm sitting there in the back of this ambulance and I'm pleading and begging and crying to myself and I'm praying, please, grandma, give me another chance. Please help me. Please, God, somebody, whoever you pray to, I am praying to them. And I'm saying, please give me the second chance in life. Um, I didn't know if I was going to make it or not. Um, I was at that point, I unconscious. Uh, about an hour and a half later, I wake up in the emergency room, hooked up to a BiPAP machine. Uh, it was at that moment where I knew you know, God, my grandma, whatever, gave me a second chance and I had to make it right. I could not go on with my life the way that I had been because I was given the second chance. And that was my wake up call, man. That was my, that was my why. That was my whole reason in life. You know, when my grandma passed, I remember promising her um, that I was going to change my life. Uh, it was one of the last things I said to her before she, you know, before she passed. And I did not hold up with my end of the bargain from February to October. And that was my breaking point. I was in such a dark depression. Um, I lost my best friend. Um, 
I was eating uncontrollably all the time. Uh, I had worked in the nightclub industry for a very long time. And I was, you know, I was still a club promoter back then. So I was partying every single night. I was drinking every single night. I was going out all hours of the night. I wasn't get, you know, I, I would leave my house at seven o'clock at night. I wouldn't get home till 8 a.m. the next day. I'd sleep for three, four hours, wake up and do it all again. Um, it was not the right way to live. And um, everything caught up to me. Everything caught up to me all at once. And it just came to a head. And, you know, I, I promised, uh, you know, I promised, you know, if I got the second chance, I'd do it. And that, that was it. And I, and I had to do it. So from there, my story gets pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I'm 510 pounds. I've never worked out a day in my life. Um, you know, when I was in high school, middle school, elementary school, I was not allowed to participate in gym class. I was, uh, I was basically an insurance hazard for them. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I had to write book reports. You know, I was on like on sports leave. So like if you hurt yourself during a sport in high school and you know, you gotta go to gym class, they make you write a book report. That's what I had to do. So, um, yeah, I, I, I never, I, I never was active as a kid. So now, so now here I am and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. So now I'm sitting with my doctor and I knew I couldn't go to a regular gym at this point. Again, 510 pounds, asthmatic, never done anything. So he suggests that I go to this pulmonary rehab facility in um, New Hyde Park called Oxygen. So I joined up Oxygen. And now this place was like for elderly people. This was like for, for older folks that had been in car accidents, had heart attacks, you know, had a stroke. And they, you know, just trying to get them back into everyday society. So I walk into this, this little uh, training facility and it's set up into like small little circuits, right? So imagine like a, a hit gym, but like super, super small circuits, nothing extravagant at all. I'm talking like some resistance bands. Um, there was like an, uh, four treadmills, um, one of those good air bikes, the ones that you would pedal and move the arms, one of those. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about. And that was it. So I remember one day in particular. Now I, I'm, and I, I was there for couple months maybe like three or four months or so the day that I realized that I couldn't be there anymore was one day I was on the treadmill and I had a middle treadmill and there was an older gentleman to the left of me and an older lady to the right of me now I'm talking they had to be anywhere between 75 to 85 years old and I am 22 years old and they are busting my ass on this treadmill like they are going banana on this treadmill they are running and I am sitting there and I'm barely going 0.5 on the treadmill and I'm gasping for air. I'm sweating. I'm profusely sweating. I'm waiting for this minute to be over. I hadn't even gone a minute. Okay. That's when I knew I'm going to make no progression here. Um, you know, I have these people, these older people, light years ahead of me. And now th these are disabled older people, light years ahead of me. So uh, I decide to leave the Oxy Gym. My uncle at the time had, well, my uncle had gotten me in touch at the time with a trainer at a gym by my house. Uh, we actually happened to go to high school together. We weren't friends in high school. He was a grade younger than me. We were just hallway buddies. Like we knew of each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to the gym, me and this kid, we hit it off. Um, he's one of my best friends to this day. He's still my trainer. He's been training me for the last five years. All of my success very much his responsibility. And I will say that, you know, until the end of time, you know, without, you know, my buddy, Steve, Steve Arnone, there is no John Arpino. There is no J.R. journey. There is none of that. Um, I work with Steve from, so from the day that I joined the gym, um, we lost 88 pounds. Okay. From the day that I joined the gym. And then what would happen was I would get sick still. I would still have asthma attacks. So every time I would have an asthma attack, I go to the hospital and guess what would happen? They put me right back on those drugs that made me lose weight. I mean, that made me gain weight. So now it's a double-edged sword. So now I'm losing weight and I'm gaining weight. I'm losing weight and I'm gaining weight. And it's not my fault that I'm gaining weight. Like I'm eating clean. I'm working out. I'm working out six days a week. Okay. I'm going to the gym. I am putting myself out there in front of kids that I went to high school with that, you know, I would never do this unless I was really trying to change my whole entire life. Um, I couldn't even fit in the machines at the gym. You know, he had to modify workouts for me so that I would be able to do them. Um, so I gotten down to, you know, I lost 88 pounds. Um, it was at this moment where my doctor looked at me and said, John, listen, you're doing incredible. You're, you're, you're losing this weight. The problem is every time you get sick, obviously we have to put you back on the prednisone and then you gain weight. Um, the only way that you'll be able to sustain any type of major weight loss is if we 
uh, consider bariatric surgery. Now, I was super against bariatric surgery. Um, I looked at it as how a lot of people who are probably listening to this looked at it. I looked at it as an excuse. I looked at it as an easy way out. I looked at it as a silver bullet. As far as I was concerned, if you got the surgery, yes, you were guaranteed to lose as much weight as you needed to lose. And that was the sole reason why you lost the weight. Little did I know is that is not the case at all. Um, you have to work harder, you know, when you get bariatric surgery. Um, for those that don't know what, you know, bariatric surgery entails, um, I personally, I got the sleeve. So uh, say your stomach is shaped like a football from end to end. If you were going to punt it, it's cut into a banana. And then they take out two thirds of your stomach, totally out of your body. They cut out your stomach. So it, rest it naturally restricts you. It only naturally restricts you for a certain amount of time. The body is a crazy thing, man. Um, it, my, your stomach is able to stretch again. It's just, it's just the anatomy. Um, so during that time, you know, it is your responsibility to fix uh, like your food addictions, your, your, your mental crutches, your, you know, your, the real life shit. Forget the food um, for a second. But you need to fix whatever, whatever's going on up here because whatever's going on in your brain, this whole journey is way more up here than it is actually physical. You know, you could tell your body to pick up a weight, you know, 10, 10, 15, 20 times. That's whatever. But you have to actually sit down and, and be honest with yourself and pinpoint why you are the way you are when it comes to food addiction and depression and shit like that. That's what you have to work out. So getting bariatric surgery actually was one of the best things that ever happened to me because I was able to actually confront my food addictions. I was able to end those food addictions. It helped with my mindset. You know, I wasn't so dependent on food anymore. You know, it's really funny. I look back to like the first year of my journey when like it was real restriction, like real, real, real restriction. Um, and I would meet up with my friends at night and like me and my friends, we would notoriously just hang out and go get food again at some point. But I wasn't hungry and nor could I really eat how they were eating or what they were eating, anything like that. So like now it would get to the point where like we would all look at each other and be like, all right, well, we can't eat. So what do you want to do? So then we would just, you know, we would start going to the batting cages. We would start, you know, going to uh, mini putt or w whatever the case may be. But it changed up my lifestyle. It kept me out of my trigger points. It kept me out of Taco Bell. Okay? It kept me out of the local pizzeria. You know, it kept me out of the drive through line. Um, bariatric surgery helped me because it helped me change my mind. It didn't help me lose weight, if that makes sense. Uh, the whole losing the weight thing, the whole going to the gym thing, the whole, you know, pushing myself thing, that fell on me still. You know, you could get bariatric surgery, never fix your brain, and you'll lose whatever, you know, initial weight that you'll lose because you had bariatric surgery. But once that's over, you'll gain all that back. You know, I know people that went through the same surgery as me. I know people that went through gastric bypass, which is even more extreme than what I got. And, you know, they gained back two times their original body weight. And it's, it's absolutely wild because everyone automatically thinks, oh, it's the easy way out. He got surgery. It's not like that. You know, it's, it's really not like that. The surgery is a tool. The same sort of tool like a barbell is, you know, it's just a tool, you know, you could do it. You don't need a barbell to lift weights. You could fill up a 20 gallon, you know, a 20 gallon jug of water and you could curl that again. It's just a tool. So that's, you know, that's how I changed my life. Um, I got the bariatric surgery. I started hitting the gym. I ate right. I changed my attitude. I changed my life. I started drinking a gallon of water a day. I changed my eating habits. I changed my lifestyle. I never went on a fucking diet because fuck diets. They don't work. I don't want to be the guy who disappoints anybody who's listening to this, but diets don't work. If you want to have success at this, you have to change your lifestyle. Um, and from there, I mean, the weight just kept coming off. And the more that the weight kept coming off, the more I was enjoying life, the more I became addicted to the gym because I wasn't addicted to the food anymore. And I'm just naturally, I guess I'm an addict and I need to be addicted to something. So there I was in the gym six days a week working my fucking ass off. And next thing I know, I'm down 273 pounds. And now I'm talking to you. That is a lot to take in. That's, a, that's an insane story because I didn't know. 
I didn't know about the gastric. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Wait, what was it? What was the surgery again? Gastric sleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea that you even had that surgery. Yeah. But I don't keep it a secret, but mm-hmm. it doesn't define me. No, no, 100% it doesn't. Um, what defines you is where you are today. Right. It, what do, it doesn't define you that you got that surgery. It defines you how much hard work you've been putting in since you got that surgery. Exactly. And like that, I guess maybe that kind of like, was that almost like a, like you said, it was like a flip in your life almost. Like oh yeah, dude. It was like a lightning really, switch. Yeah. Like that flip really just like went off and you were just like, all right, like now I have to keep myself in check. Like yep. the surgery basically forced you to keep yourself in check and you did, you still had to take your uh, pills, right? You still had to take your medication. So, all right. So when I was heavy, um, mm-hmm. I was put on blood pressure medicine when I was 13 years old. I had high blood pressure. I never met another 13 year old that had high blood pressure, but I was that guy. Uh, I had sleep apnea. Um, you know, I had to sleep with a, with a CPAP machine every night. Um, after I got the bariatric surgery and I started losing weight, bro, off the high blood pressure medicine quick, off the, the sleep machine quick, um, off the prednisone super quick. Um, you know, if I was having, let's just say, for example, this is just an example, but let's say I was having 12 asthma attacks a year. I was barely having two. Like, that's how different my life was. Now, I knew my whole life my asthma would get better if I lost weight, but I couldn't lose the fucking weight because I was stuck on these pills. So, yes, did bariatric surgery save my life? Absolutely. Did bariatric surgery make me lose 272 pounds? No, it did not. I made me lose 272 pounds. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's insane. And how do you think that you were able – so do you think the surgery made you more accountable to reaching your weight loss goals? Or- Absolutely. Um, yeah. So how do you think like, how did I'll tell you, think, you right like, now? Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you right now. Um, this, the surgery kept me accountable because we all have a choice, right? We all have a choice in life. Um, you can eat the piece of cake or you cannot eat the piece of cake, right? Let's just use that as the example. Um, I knew because I had bariatric surgery. Well, why would you eat the piece of cake? Um, you're only going to go backward. Well, first of all, when you first get the surgery, you can't eat the way that you were eating. You'll be sick. So do you want to be sick and throw up? Is it worth two hours of absolute pain, agony, throwing up, you know, the worst pain of your life? No, it's not worth what, what fucking piece of cake is worth all that. It's not worth it, dude. Um, so like it, it helped me keep accountable because I didn't want to do those things anymore. It, 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 it showed me, okay, chicken fills you up, right? Chicken is, is, is a very dense protein. Steak is a very dense protein. It'll fill you up. Would I rather have, you know, three pieces of grilled chicken or some fucking Taco Bell? I mean, now, three pieces of chicken all day, every day. Um, and it taught me that. It, it, it taught me that there's better options out there. There's better things that you can do. Because also, again, you know, I knew people on a personal level that had gotten bariatric surgery and then gained back all the weight. And I didn't want to be that statistic. I didn't want to be one of those people. Um, I didn't want to have to go through a revision surgery. You know, you would get a revision surgery. If, if you fuck up, hey, guess what? We could do it one more time and hopefully it works out this time. I didn't want that. I never wanted to go through that again. Why? So I could have people say, oh, well, he had to get the surgery twice, you know? Absolutely. And you said something about that you would hang out with your friends and basically almost all you guys did was go out to eat. Yeah. And like that was just part of the routine. Mm-hmm. So when this surgery happened, it kind of forced you guys to just like, indulge in other activities other yeah, than man. like yo like yo like you said let, yo, let's go hit the batting cage let's right. uh, let's go for a run let's go work out let's yeah. go do something productive let's start let's talk when about- when when, when I'll, I'll never forget when i first got my surgery done i had never gone to the movie theater so many times in my life i remember we saw every new movie in like the year 2006 late 2016 2017 mm-hmm. and we saw every movie because there was just nothing to do um whether it was cold outside or whatever so We'd, you know, look up on our phone what movie was playing right now and off to the movie theater we went. Go, you know, get a, bo- a large bottle of water. Wouldn't, you know, wouldn't go to the snack line. Wouldn't go get popcorn. Wouldn't do any of that. You know, sip the bottle of water throughout the movie and now you just saw the new Avenger movie. You just saw the new Iron Man movie. You just saw whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever was playing. But yeah, I know we found other outlets. We found other things to do. Um, it wasn't, it, it, our friendship became... And, and these are my best friends in my whole entire life, like people that I would, you know, catch a bullet for. But our friendship became deeper because we weren't just sitting there and we weren't just going out to eat. 
You follow what I'm saying? Like, absolutely. We were having better conversation. We were doing more things. We were making real memories. It wasn't just like, hey, remember that time we went to the pizzeria? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I can, I can relate so much to that. Yeah. And like, I feel like a lot of people don't realize like how important it is to have the right people around you. Like you said, like, oh, yeah. you know, once, like you said, your trainer now is literally one of your best friends now. Yes. And I just feel like a lot of people are just not around the right people and they don't know how to exit that. But once you, once you hang around the right people, like, and that are on your same vibe that are like gearing towards their goals and they're just focused, right. like your life also changes dramatically too. Like your circle just, like I'm only, I'm only 21 and my circle has just gotten so much smaller in the past like three years alone. It's going to keep getting smaller. It's going to keep getting smaller. So like, why don't you explain like how, how's your circle so, been and how has it changed? One of my favorite quotes in life, and I use this quote a lot. Um, Steve Harvey once said that if you hang around dead people, you're going to die. And that quote alone put a lot of things in perspective to me. So if you hang out with garbage, you're going to become garbage. You can interchange the words all you want. You are who you hang out with, whether you like it or not. You could be the most normal of the friend group, but you are exactly who you hang out with. So if you hang around negative people, you are going to be negative. If you hang around positive people, positive things will happen to you because it's that vibe. It's that energy. People think energy is a fake thing. Energy is such a real thing, man. Take yourself, out of the, uh, take yourself out of the current friend group that you're in for two weeks. Hang around, you know, a totally different friend group. Tell me how you feel, you know, whether that's good or bad. You know, that other friend group could be terrible, but I bet you you notice a difference in your everyday life. I bet you you notice a difference in the vibes around you. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, we don't realize a lot of things in life and we don't realize how other people's actions, other people's attitudes um, affect us ever, ever. 100%. So, I mean, it just kind of skims you, past you. Yeah. yeah, all the time. And as you get older, you're going to realize, and, and this is me just talking to you now, as you get older, you're just going to realize what's really important in life and what quality of people you want to keep around your life because you're entering in a stage right now, like I just turned uh, 27. Hey, you, you're 21 years old. You know, you're going to enter in a stage in your life where in a couple of years, the friends that you have around you then are probably going to be the friends that you have for the rest of your life. You know, you and your friends, you're going to go off, you know, you're going to find a girl. If you don't have one already, you're going to go get engaged. You're going to get married. So who you have around you right now will probably be the ones that you have in your backyard when you're older, when you're having a barbecue. So do you want these people around that long? You know, how beneficial are they to your life and how beneficial are you to their life? What kind of real life value are they adding to you? Are they holding you back? Or are they pushing you forward? And that's a real question you have to ask yourself because I was friends with people for a very, very, very long time that were holding me back, you know, that they were a negative uh, vibe, that they were just, you know, they would have me by the shirt collar and I didn't even know it, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's something that you have to realize and and you have to know your worth um, and you have to know what you want out of life. 100%, 100%. And I have these conversations, like, I'm really glad. I have these same conversations with my closest friends and I'm really glad we have those conversations because we'll, we'll be talking about, you know, like, you know, like, you know, what's, what's next for you? Like, what are you doing next? Like, right. do you have a game plan? Like, if you don't, let's talk about your game plan. Right. I don't really want to talk about this girl. I don't want to talk about trash about anyone else. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? What are you doing to get better? Like I have a group chat that's uh, it's called get better daily. And I okay. just, have every, and I have everyone like in there and I'm just like, Hey guys, how, how are we doing this week? Like, how's everyone yeah. How's everyone doing? It's like th- four of my closest friends, and I'm just like, what progress did you awesome. guys make this week? Like, what what you guys do? Do you guys go for a run? Do you guys, dude, do- I can tell you, you're 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 a very enlightened dude, man. You are very you're a very positive dude. I really love the vibes that you give off, man. Like you you know what you want, and you I understand this that. this life. You you really do. You understand the big picture in life, and you want to help people um, progress. Um, you're one of the good ones. Uh, you really that, are. Man. Thanks, man. And yeah, I of think course, the same man. thing. I think this exact same thing about you. And that's why I wanted you to come on here, man, because you, you understand that like, once you live life fully to your fullest potential that like to the most that you can do, um, you're just so much happier, you know, like if you know, if you're doing what you know, you need to do, you're just a happier person. Like I just get such better vibes now than I did before. Uh, when I was just wasting my time, you know, drinking with my friends, whatever. I'm just like, I I got my own little business going on. Like, it's just, I, I see everything going up. And once you switch that, uh, once you make that like kind of switch in your life, you're just like, you know, life is going to get better. It's not going to get worse. I'm not Always. thinking about, 
I'm not thinking about, you know, what, what bad thing could happen. I'm thinking about, you know, like this exactly. could happen to me. I look forward, I almost pretty much every day. I look forward to waking up. I'm just like, I can't wait to, yeah. I can't wait to work on my Instagram. I can't wait to start connecting with more people. I can't wait to edit the podcast because I just love yeah. doing this stuff, man. And I think you relate a lot. Dude. I mean, listen, I, I, and I'll say it to you like this. My worst day today is still better than my best day back then. I got you. I can't wait to wake up every morning. Um, I look forward to so much shit in my life now. Uh, you know, I never lived that way. I have so many projects I'm working on now. Um, I started a business, you know, right before COVID hit. I started a whole, whole business. Uh, for those that don't know, um, me and, uh, and my partner, I do a podcast as well. It's called the Accountable Life Group Podcast. Um, but not only is it a podcast, we have a online server that we have tailored to basically be the anti-social media, social media. So I want you to, if you want to become a part of it, I want you to leave your person, your, your social media, your Instagram, your Facebook, your, that persona, that person that you are on those platforms. I want you to leave that at the fucking door because that's not welcome here. Um, you know, it's a very loving, a group. We all keep each other accountable. Um, and eventually I'm going to get into life coaching and, you know, um, there's someone out there who, who needs a life coach who, who would like to have me as a life coach. That's something that I want to do. I want to be able to add value to someone's life. I want to show them that there's more to life than just, you know, food or whatever the case may be. Like you can get out of that dark place and, you know, I've bettered my life. Um, but my, just because I bettered my life doesn't mean that my journey is over. My journey is forever. Uh, and that's why I really try to tell people like, <clears throat> yeah, I may have lost 272 pounds and yeah, I don't weigh myself every day. I don't even weigh myself once a month. Hell, I don't even weigh myself every three months. I live life. Um, I balance, you know, um, but I, I know that there's people out there that are living the same struggles that I had and I was put on God's green earth to help them get through that. And that's what I want to do. And that's what I need to do. And thankfully, you know, God is blessed me with the gift of gab and I'm able to talk to basically anybody ever and have a great conversation with them. And it's just something that I want to pass on. You know, if I'm able to pass on a little bit of knowledge to you through your own podcast, man, I did my job. You know, you wanted me as a guest and I hope that I added value to your show. Um, and I hope, and I hope, I'm just thank you. you already. Yeah. 100%. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And I hope that someone listening, if, if anyone's listening to this podcast, I hope that you take something, something minuscule from this and you're able to, you know, put in your back pocket and hold it for a rainy day. And when that rainy day comes, you're able to remember, you know, Oh, you know, Jay Arp said this and you know, I can get through this, you know, it's, it's, there's worse things out there. And that's all I want, dude. Like, I just want people to be motivated. I want them to be happy with themselves. I want them to love life, dude. We're only, as far as we're concerned, we're only put on this fucking rock once. And we have to make the most of it. 100%. Like, why would you, why would you want to live a life where you're just pissed all the time about what you're exactly. doing? Like, no, find something that you really love, inspire other people through that, and just, just, try, to, just try to live as much as possible, you know? It's, like that. it's our job in life to, to help each other. And mm -hmm. that's something that we lost. And it's unfortunate, but you know, if, if I can help that crusade of bringing that back and we can all, you know, help each other out and, you know, one hand washes the other and, you know, you scratch my back, my, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's what I want, man. That's all I want. I want us all to be successful. I want us all to be happy. I, I, I don't care about my own success. I am successful. I'm successful in my own right. And I'm happy with where I am at right now, but I want to see somebody else be successful. I want to help somebody else get to where they want to go. That, that's success to me. That's, that's powerful because that's one of the reasons why I love doing uh, the online coaching thing. Like I love seeing people change their bodies and then they're telling me, yo, like, it's really not even about like the body. Yeah. It's like, I feel so different now. I feel yeah. like a different person. I can just, you know, walk in somewhere and I just feel, I just have so much more confidence in myself Hell I'm yeah. like, Good because you went from where I was and I felt like I had no confidence and now you, you know what I feel now. And that was my complete goal. Like whether right. you want to keep, whether you want to keep working with me or not, I don't care, man. My almost, my mission was almost fulfilled. If you want to keep working with me, that's a bonus for me. Cause I got to work with a motivated individual now. Fact. So exactly. it's, Amen. it's, it's crazy. And sorry, I just want to touch on this uh, real quick. No, go ahead. So you mentioned, you said, um, you know, uh, with your group, you know, leave your, uh, Instagram, like the social media thing, like out the door. Like, I just want to talk to you 
like the real right. person. You know what I'm talking right. about? So I actually have two Instagrams. One is a personal one or one mm-hmm. is like a personal one and one is uh, my fitness one. Right. But now like I look at my personal one and I'm like, you know, I'm the fakest person on that. I mm-hmm. just have pictures of me just like with my friends, like, you know, pretending to be whoever this person that I was trying to be. And now I have my fitness page and I'm like, this is the real me. This is yeah. the real person that I want to be. I'm not trying to impress anyone because in my personal one, I just feel like uh, I'm really just posting pictures so other people can see what I'm doing. Like, and, and like them. trying to impress yeah. them and maybe right. they'll like me like, and maybe they'll invite me to a party or whatever. That was my uh-huh. mindset back then. Of course. And now and that's what like, Instagram was created for. Exactly. But now I have, I found a way where I can just like, you know, bring people that are as motivated as I am. And then they're just going to motivate me more. And maybe I'll motivate someone along the way, man. Exactly. You know that's what I'm it. Saying? That's, and, that's the, that's the answer, man. Mm-hmm. And I remember I had this, my last podcast uh, I did with uh, a walk on for a D one team and he just had a crazy work ethic, crazy guy. And um, one person commented on it and I sent it to him and I was like, dude, if this one person like, got inspired by it to walk onto their basketball team. I'm like, Hey, I'm super happy with that. Yeah, man. I'm super happy with that. That's awesome. I was, I I felt fulfilled just through that. So like, that was incredible. And it kind of touches on what you were saying with, um, you know, if you could change one person's life. uh, Yeah, that's it, man. I I mean, I, am sure we've all seen that, that meme online, you know, all I pray is for one person to see my page and, you know, I be the reason that they change your life. That's all I want, dude. I, even if I never even meet the person, you know, it, it, I wake up in the morning and, and if I know that if I can inspire someone to continue out their day, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and there's so many people out there that we just don't know what's going on in their head. We don't know what's going on in their personal life. We don't know who they really are behind closed doors. And I've been that person, man. And, you know, I've had those dark thoughts. I've had those demons. Um, those are the people that, you know, I want to help. Those are the people that I want to hear my message that I I want them to know, you know, this struggle is temporary. You know, this too shall pass. Like, you know, nothing lasts forever. And, you know, people usually say, oh, nothing lasts forever when it's about something good. Like, oh, don't get your hopes up. Nothing lasts forever. Well, hey, if you're in that dark place, just remember nothing lasts forever. Like it will end. You just have to learn how to be your own light and you will get out of that dark tunnel. Wow. I, that, that hit home. You got to be your own light. Yeah. Like you can't be relying on other stuff to bring you up. Like you should be doing things that are going to make you feel better about yourself. Like, you know, working out, eating healthy, um, maybe starting your own business, like just feeling like you put in as much as you could that day. That's what's going to make you feel better. But at the end of the day, you just have to be proud of who you are. Exactly. So, and I feel like a lot of people aren't proud of who they are. And you know, if you're not, if you're listening to this and you're not proud of who you are, what do what do you want to do? What, what would make a difference um, to make you proud of who you are? Is it, do you, do you need to go tomorrow? Are you going to start working out? Um, Maybe you'll go for a run. Maybe you'll change your diet. Maybe you'll finally get start on that business that you kept talking about for years. Maybe you'll finally start making moves that you've been telling people what you're going to do for years and you still haven't taken action. So how about you take action? That's the whole point of this podcast. It's called the go get it podcast. You can go get what after you really, really want in life. Amen, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's the attitude you need to have in life, that go getting attitude. Exactly. All right. So one, one last point, and then I'm gonna let you go. Cause I know you said you got something to do at seven 30. Absolutely. Um, so, um, you mentioned, you know, no diet works. That's right. No diet works. And why don't I kind of want you to elaborate a little bit on that so people can understand what you're saying. Sure. I would love to elaborate on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so why I say that, I want you to look at the word diet for me for a second. Okay. The key word to the word diet is die. D I E. Right. So a diet, when you go on a diet, you naturally think to yourself, Hey, this has a beginning point and an end point. And I can't wait to get to that end point. Once I start this beginning point. Okay. And it's, that's the circle. Okay. And we've all fallen into that circle. It's a revolving door. We start a diet. We can't stand it. After two weeks, we get off the diet. We gain 15 pounds and then we're looking for the next diet. Right. Okay. Now, when you change your lifestyle, I want you to look at the word lifestyle for me. The key word to lifestyle is life. It's forever. Okay. You're not just changing your eating habits. You know, you're changing everything about you. It's, it's more, there's so much more to this journey than just what goes into your mouth. It's what goes into your brain and what goes through your ears. It's what you project to the world. Like that's why it's a lifestyle change. That's why it's not a diet. Diets don't work. Diets mean shit. 
Okay, the diet culture hates me. Why? Because I tell it how it fucking is. Don't go out there and go buy a fucking diet book. Go out there and go buy the fucking secret. Read the secret. Manifest the things that you want in life. Figure out what it is that you want. Talk about it. Be about it. Tell people about it. Show a friend. If you keep fucking talking about something, you will speak it into existence. It's science. It's crazy. It sounds wild. But when you break it down and you find out why that is and what the law of attraction really is, bro, you can have whatever you fucking want in life. Create it. Manifest it. Talk about it. Please. No more diets. Diets don't work. Diets are shit. Okay? A diet, you just look for it to end. You can't fucking wait for that moment. Right? Change your lifestyle. Open up that new avenue. Go down that new route. You know, the grass, the gra they say the grass isn't greener on the other side, right? You have to water your own grass. Mm -hmm. Start watering your own grass. Start changing your life. Mm -hmm. And I think especially like with all, with all these fucking fake ass diets out there, like I've, I know I cannot even count on one finger how, or one hand how many people have had like these shake diets. And I'm like, right. what are you doing? Like you're not going to. My friend was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the shake diet for like a week. And I'm just like, why? Like, why even do it for a week if you know you're only going to do it for a week? What right. is the point? Exactly. It, you're not going to keep doing it. It's like getting into a relationship and knowing that you're going to get out of it in a week. Well, exactly. Or that, and that's what I love about like when people have cheat meals, right? Mm -hmm. So like what comes with a diet is the cheat meal. How many times am I allowed to cheat? How many times are you allowed to cheat on your wife? How many times are you allowed to cheat on your girlfriend? Like- that's why it's a lifestyle change. It's something that's supposed to stick by you for life, that you, you, you do for life, right? Like you wouldn't get into a relationship and be like, hey, babe, by the way, how many times am I allowed to cheat on you? The fuck? That's a great she'll point. You, yeah, she'll smack you silly. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're not. You can balance out life. I'm not telling you you can't ever eat a cheeseburger again. I'm not telling you you can't ever have a slice of pizza again. What I'm telling you is you need to, you've had enough fucking slices of pizza. You've had enough cheeseburgers. And that's something that I've always reminded myself throughout my journey. I personally haven't had a real slice of pizza in five years, but that's my personal choice. That's not because I'm telling myself that I can't. I know for a fact I could go right now, leave my house, go to the pizzeria, have two slices of pizza and be fine tomorrow. I'm not going to gain back 500 pounds. It's just, that's not how life works. It's all about balances. Mm -hmm. It's all about figuring how bad you want something. You know, I don't call them cheat meals. I call them treat meals because they're treats. Mm -hmm. I'm not cheats. I'm not cheating on anything. I'm a loyal motherfucker. I got you. I got you. That's powerful. That's power. And once you start, once you can learn the power of counting your calories, right. learn the power of macronutrients, you, you just learn that you can fit these foods in your life. If, like you said, if you want a slice of pizza and if it fits your calories for the day, fucking go get a slice of pizza. I tell yeah, my clients dude. all the time. They're like, Oh, can I have this pizza? I'm like, well, will it fit your calories? They're like, yeah. Then I'm like, yeah, go for it. Right. I don't want you to torture yourself. We're right. not, we're not going for, we're not bodybuilding. Like maybe if you're doing for like, if maybe you're doing a bodybuilding show, that's a different story. Oh, yeah. That's a totally but different game. Yeah. But this is a li This is lifestyle. This right. is lifestyle. If you just want to lose weight, be healthier. You people think, Oh, I got to cut out all this shit. I got to cut out the ice cream. I got to cut out the burgers. I got to cut out the pizza. Just reduce the amount that you have, but you can still fit it in every now and then. Just don't be stupid about it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So exactly. that was, that was probably the final point that I wanted to make. Um, is oh, yeah. and is there anything else that you would say to someone that was in your position before we leave, uh, that you would tell someone in your in a similar position that you were in, um, right now? I love that you ended the podcast like that because that's exactly how I end my podcast. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, it's gonna sound corny, okay? You've all heard this a million times, but I promise that it'll make sense by the time I'm done speaking. Trust the process, okay? Everyone says trust the process. Trust that you're allowed to fail. Trust that um, if you do fail, it's not the end of the world. Trust that if you fail, you won't quit because if you quit, you won't fail. Now, you will succeed. Um, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, every failure leads to success, Okay just like the rain leads to sunshine, just like sadness leads to joy. If you realize that and you really take into account that you are responsible for your own actions and everything that you do, you will have success. Now, a very important thing that goes along with success is staying accountable. Now, a lot of people don't understand what accountability is, okay? I did not know really what accountability was before I started this journey. 
but I'm going to be very, very blunt with you guys. If you're going to do something and you say you're going to do it, fucking follow through. Fucking do it. And do it every time and do it to the best of your ability. That is accountability. Don't talk about it anymore. Okay? You've talked about it enough. You've told enough people. You've done it. You've gone to your parents and you said, I'm going to start, and then you didn't do it. Do it. Follow through. When you start following through for yourself, amazing things happen. Because at the end of the day, you're born alone and you're going to die alone. And I know that that sounds really depressing, but it shouldn't because you are responsible for your own success. That's a powerful way to end this podcast. John, I appreciate you coming on here. This is, you had an insane story, an insane transformation, man. So I hope someone got inspired by this and uh, just appreciate you guys. Appreciate John coming on here and make sure you guys go check out his podcast. All links will be in the bio. My brother, thank you for having me on and uh, thank you guys for uh, listening. Absolutely.